and we are live. Sorry about that. Almost, uh, almost a second late. I had to do it in my car again. Waiting for people to sign on. I'm very excited for this one. I'm gonna be talking with Flying Korish about calisthenics, and then we're gonna go wild into the consciousness. What's up, Rima? How's everything? So, just waiting for everyone signing on. What's up, Just Motorcycles? How's everything, everybody? Rima, so nice to see you here. John, what's up, bro? What's up, Weiss? How's everything, my dude? Korish is in. Let me get him on screen. Send him a request. The dancing calisthenics guy. I guess I guess we both are the dancing calisthenics guy. Korish, how are you, brother? Awesome. Good to see you, brother. You too. So excited. How's the weather over in Germany? Wait, you're in Greece right now, right? I'm Greece, yeah. Oh my God! How is it? Are you are you in the islands, or where where are you at in Greece? I'm on an island. Uh, it's called Crete. It's the biggest island on Greece, and the weather's just optimum. optimum. Very, very, very nice. Oh my God! It just finally got cold over here in New York. I'm I'm, I'm jealous. I'm, I'm seeing the tank top. I'm seeing the beautiful weather. I saw the uh the, the compilation of the flight going in. I was oh my God, heaven. Yeah, really, really. Mm -hmm. So let's start off. I, I'm sure everyone knows who you are. Tell everyone who you are. Give yourself an introduction and let, let's go wild. Let's have some fun with this. Um, yeah, I'm Frank Korash. Uh, most of you guys probably know me uh, as the man who dances under the bar with a mask on. And yeah, today we're talking about consciousness, calisthenics, and how to bring that conscious, creative ideas into calisthenics yes 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 so all right why don't we go uh side to side uh back and forth let's let's talk about this a bit because creativity and in calisthenics is a beautiful way to start connecting to your consciousness my my idea is the reason i like it so much and calisthenics so much is how much it connects your your nervous system to the motor units of your muscles it essentially makes us into cephalopods into octopi makes our limbs out of nervous systems we could feel our limbs differently that that that's like a very nice introductory into in, introduction into consciousness in my opinion and what i do let's uh, let's talk about it how did you uh, start approaching your consciousness training cuz you're very deep into it and like later on let's let's go really crazy but let's first start like the base like at the very, very beginning, like what is, where is your creativity in calisthenics? Like where does it come from? What, what are you trying to do? Um, at first, I just wanted to become somebody, to be honest. At mm. first, I started calisthenics to become someone. Like I started with 14 and to me, my biggest goal was to be very known. And once I achieved that goal, I realized that uh, it's not about achieving uh, something or becoming someone. And after becoming that, after reaching my goal, I realized, nah, it's actually about the awareness behind every idea or any ambition or goal that we are yeah. trying to Oh, I like that. I like, um, by the way, I did the exact same journey. So mine was exactly the opposite where I was working on consciousness uh, and just working on just, just understanding my body movement. You know, my background was in grappling before calisthenics, before I decided to uh, do this. And then uh, it was basically like during the, during uh, early lockdown, I was just like, eh, I guess I should get out there and get myself known a little. So <laughs> It was the exact opposite. Like, I was like, I have something to share. Maybe I should share it with people. Mm -hmm. So the dancing, like, first of all, I, I, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm constantly filming walking sets. The past two days, I'm filming walking sets. I'm walking in your footsteps. I'm, I'm uh, kind of like pulling from your inspiration from the path you laid before me. What, what, what had you put on the mask? What had you set the internet on fire with the, with the, uh, the Jabberwocky dances on the bar? Because they're still the best I've seen. It's just no one comes close to you uh, on that. Yeah, it's, it's a funny story. I actually started calisthenics because I couldn't go to a dance school. My par parents weren't, weren't ready to pay uh, the price. Uh, so... I just found another way and calisthenics is for free. But actually I wanted to be a dancer, right? Okay. So, uh, after years of practicing calisthenics become known, I realized, hey man, uh, 
I need that dancing too. And then I just combined those two things, right? I, I wanted to become a dancer, then I became a calisthenics athlete. And I thought, why not combine those two things? And Jabba Wookies was one of my idols. Back okay. In the still, they still are. So, yeah, I just tried to do that with a mask on. So much of so much of mine is also wanting to be a dancer, but for me, it's just like I'm just embarrassed. Like I, I'm I'm tall, I'm goofy. Whenever I'm on a dance floor, I'm like everyone's looking at me. I'm way too I'm too way too lanky for this. I feel silly. But then, like I don't know if I'm on rings or doing calisthenics on parallettes or anything. I'm like okay, I feel comfortable. I like this confidence yeah. level on max. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm like I'm good with this. I'm not. I'm not. A, I'm not embarrassed. I felt the same way with the grappling and martial arts. I'm like this. This is artistic movement. This is dancing. It's beautiful, but it's also like I'm fighting. So I'm like I'm not embarrassed. Uh, you know, yeah. I'm on the I'm on the ground fighting. So I'm not like standing up there like a head taller than everyone with everyone looking at me while I'm like moving around all awkwardly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. So that's great. So now you're 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 bar walking though. It's unreal. Um, and a lot of that comes from just being able to sequence and synchronize the movement of your upper body, lower body to just initiate a movement in the toe and have it like just kind of like this, the wave pattern go all the way through your body and carry you upward with. Let's talk about this because this is really, really complicated. Mm. And um, what would you recommend? How should people get into walking? Because I think just the walking pattern, it's an incredibly simple pattern. and I think so many people struggle with it. So for me, just the basic walk, I think one of the best ways to learn it is just even like a hanging V-sit or even something like a dragon flag would probably be too advanced for people to learn walking, but just like a hanging V-sit or, or like a dip, just, just, you know, supported dip support up to an L-sit. And it really, for me, again, it won't be the same because it's like a vertical body, but with any type of horizontal body, for me, it's always, it's always uh, bend slightly at the knee and then drive the hip and stomp the leg straight, and it kind of creates a walking pattern. Obviously, this line will... Let's talk about vertical, though, because you're very... The, the vertical pulling, and how, how do you sequence your walking on a vertical uh, movement? Mm. So the first and major recommendation to be able to walk smoothly on a vertical bar is basic strength, first of all. Because if yeah. you... If you Pull up like that when you are sick at 3 a.m. or whatever time, whatever circumstances, then you won't be able to do like um, walking smoothly as it looks on me. So first yeah. of all, strength is needed. Like you should be able to do, I mean, if you really want to dance on the bar, which is absolutely unreal, you should be able to do 100 pull-ups a day easy. Like yeah. not on a row, but it should be like no questions. After yeah. You should have like 100 pull-ups done. But yeah, that's such a good rack. Start, yeah. Also start um, as a bloody beginner, then I would recommend you to just try to, at the beginning of your training, oh, getting too many messages. <laughs> from, um, yeah, I would recommend you do typewrite pull-ups and just do a little work with that. Yep. Mm. So three works to the right, side three walks to the left maybe find the music that that fits your 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 um uh, your your level and yeah go for that um l sit walks like walk up into the l sit hold it even mm -hmm. on the bus just walk up to the l sit and get comfortable in walking and um holding the isometric holds right yeah I think uh, a nice thing to help with isometrics that I always found was uh, I, I can I control the, I call them uh, like dynamic isometrics. So very slow, like stochastic movement patterns, like just sequential movements where it's always like not just pulling like fluid reps, but but kind of sequencing your movement. Just just experiment a little like mm -hmm. even in a typewriter. Don't just go side to side, maybe sequence trying to turn your body, rotate a little, go side to side. I find uh, like that, that was huge for me, like way back in the day, just rather than traditional movement, just changing it up a little bit each time, you know, like a little bit rotating slightly and then more and more like uh, changing my, my thoracic angle and my spine, changing mm -hmm. just even flexion or, or extension in the ankle, just always experimenting with different, just kind of slightly different movement patterns and just going outside the norm. So 
I, I guess like for me, it's like whatever my body did naturally and whatever seems like the natural movement pattern, always trying to slowly and, and sequentially and just every day change the pattern more and more and more. So like starting pull-ups with that, you know, the arched back and the legs dangling behind, slowly, slowly working into that, working into hollow, then once in hollow, working different patterns, working side to side, trying to take my body and turn it out to the side and do pull-ups with my legs out sideways. Just, just working through every different plane of motion will then allow me to choose which plane of motion to work through when I'm, when I'm moving in that pattern. So exploring what the body's capable based on the timeline you find yourself on is what I do essentially. But by the way, I just want to throw it out there uh, a while back when we were talking about like the ring stuff and everything, you posted that, that uh, the ring flow where you did the back fledge, the super explosive back fledge, and then you caught in the front lever. Mm -hmm. Yo, it took me, it took me like, I want to say like three months to pull it off. So I hit the, I did a backflip into the back fledge to catch the front lever. And that was a hundred percent you. And I thank you so much for it because it gave me something really difficult to work on for three months, tore the hell out of my wrists. And when I finally hit it, I was like, thank you so much, Corish. I, I, I loved it so much. Like seeing, seeing your explosive back fledge completely changed the way I looked at it and expanded my game so, so much. And thank you so much for that. Because again, I can't just study my movement patterns. I have to study everyone's movement patterns. And who better to study than the man who always inspires me on, on uh, walking and movement patterns. So thank you for that. Huge thank you. Thank you for showing how to do like uh, ring flows. Man, that's crazy because I'm... Thank you, brother. And those ring flows is, is like yoga on rings with strength, right? Thank you. Yes, yes. And I ordered some rings to my hotel here in Greece, and I'm going to do those flows instead of yoga, um, just straight go to the ring flows, right? With the thank yoga you. And uh, let's see, uh, I've never done it yet, but uh, let's see. It's really cool. I think yoga and so many of these art forms, they blend in together so nicely. Like I have a lot of yoga friends in the yoga community. Now, I've, I've never done yoga before. I'm not, I'm not a yoga guy, but I, I'm always interacting with them, studying their movements and everything and trying to figure out how to put it onto the rings. And I think it's kind of like, again, this will tie into the creativity. And uh, I think it really just comes down to uh, my, my background in martial arts. And like, even though I wasn't a Jeet Kune Do guy or anything like that, I, I'm just looking at it through like the Bruce Lee lens where it's like, be like water, take, take from everything, just put it all together. My grappling was always like that. I wasn't a strict uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu guy. I took from everything, every, dom uh, every type of uh, grappling. And like, I think calisthenics has like a huge application to that. And that's what I, th you know, bar freestyle. I'm not a bar freestyle guy. And you and Fan and, and everyone, you guys inspire me so much with what you're doing because it's just the creativity. You're looking at like basically what's been like a workout or a gymnastics thing. And then you're adding your creativity to it. You're exploring movement potential. You're doing all of this, taking from everything. And I think the rings are the same thing. It's just, it's yoga silks. It's a gymnastic application. It ties into everything. And, movement potential is really what puts it together and just, uh, honestly thank you it's such an honor to hear you say that about the ring flow stuff i got i got to send you something i didn't finish editing yet but i, I about how to like wrap the wrap the straps around the uh around the triceps mm. it adds into like you can just do endless uh looping patterns you could just walk and double 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 around the world walks and stuff it's so cool wow Dope. yeah so so what are you what are you working on these days like what are you what's uh what's your like what's your creativity at right now like what are you really like trying to like open up in yourself and change and do differently mm, that's a good question um right now i'm really trying to distance myself from too many free safe flows on a high bar okay uh the the last time i did a free cell session was in portugal uh, and I injured my, my shoulder again because the old me just pulled me back, right? The old, mm -hmm. the old idea of me pulled me back and I need to learn now how to step back because I, I, I did five perfect combos and I felt very comfortable and I was like, all right, that's good. I'm good for today. And, uh, but then my ego came back, man, the ego. Uh -huh. Hey, followers came back. I was like, no, hit that, hit that move too, like the double twist or giant play 40. And right now I'm just trying to step back and focus more on flexibility. Ah, yes. That's ma a major key. Major. Um, 
major key, like being like water, is uh, what I focus now because I was trying to be fire, ambitious, right? Now I'm mm -hmm. seeing water kills uh, uh, fire in a second, right? And yes. Waves. If you be water, you have all the waves, all the possibilities. I'm expanding in yoga flow, ring flow. Um, I'm just trying to find new ways to be creative. Yes, just yeah. defy gravity any way possible. It's so true. Just explore creativity. I, I love you. You're, the, you're absolutely. I, I love the mind for it. You know what I've been experimenting with lately, and I got to get more and more into actual full ring flows. Where so like yesterday, um, just saw her in here, Kim. We, we were training. Like I had the I had the rings, like the bottom of the rings at at knee height, mm -hmm. and started doing rolling muscle up flows that close to the ground. What a crazy, ex it changes everything up. It, it, it's so cool because so much of calisthenics is always straight body line and mm. full, you know, full lengthening and full expansion of the body. Mm. I find that the lower and lower and lower you go, it really makes things very interesting with how well you can compress into a ball. And mm. like this, this was, I've never done this before, but doing like continuous rolling muscle ups where, I mean, I literally only had about like, I don't know, like a foot and a half of clearance. It was, it, it was a game changer. And like how much it hit the triceps differently, the core differently, the compression, it, game changer. I got to, I got to explore this. I think this is my next, my next thing. Just keep getting the rings lower and lower to the ground and doing the exact same flows with, but with absolutely zero clearance whatsoever on the ground. And like how different it is where you can't even get out of like, like the only way you can flow through these things is being in touch levers and, and stuff like that the whole time. It, it's, it's actually really fascinating. There's like a lot the effect I, on the body. When I'm trying to do the um, ring flows, I'm gonna do it like knee height, mm -hmm. like go down to the yoga flow, right? Yeah, oh yeah, and it ties together so perfectly. Yeah. Yeah, since you're already on the ground, it's so cool. Your head's right there. You can literally just put your head down, transition with headstands, anything you want to transition with. So yeah. cool how everything ties together. I would love, I, I just this is a crazy thought. I would love to see ring flows somehow become like a freestyle type competition where you can't hang the rings any higher than your shoulders. That's the only rule. Like, <laughs> I, I think it would be so fascinating. Maybe, maybe if you just spread it more and more. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to keep pumping on it anyway possible yeah so all right so let let calisthenics is fun we talk about it a lot let's keep dipping into it but let's start throwing in a lot of consciousness so how where did your consciousness journey begin like like what what started you off uh like, the moment i reached everything i always wanted at that point i started the journey inwards because n now um I had everything, right? I knocked on every door, I went through, and all the doors at the end were empty. There was no fulfillment, right? So mm -hmm. all the thousand doors that I opened was only emptiness. And on that day, I just said, oh man, maybe I should go inwards again because mm -hmm. all, all the doors outside of, of me doesn't fulfill me. It keeps keep, keeps me uh, distracted. And it's so true. When, when I went inside, and uh, yeah, then I got a big belly laughter because the thousand steps were necessary. It was just one step, and then mm -hmm. what's right? Once you go upwards, you go upwards. Once you look outwards, you go downwards. Yeah. So true. And here's, here's I, I, I had a very similar uh, journey in that regard, too. And what I found was once w once I was much more, you know, I, I journeyed inward so much more. I went back and I looked back at all those old experiences that I found meaningless and completely found new meaning in all of them. And I realized the experiences weren't meaningless. I was meaningless at the time. And because I had no meaning, I could draw no meaning because, you know, I could only attract like. So without any meaning internally, I could find no meaning externally. And now just like going back and running through the little time machine, the little internal time machine, it's just a new beauty to things that I never appreciated before. And it's just I'm filling my current life with so much more joy and meaning and just fullness. And that, that, that's entirely just, it's the same thing with love or anything like you can't love others. If you don't love yourself, you can't find meaning. If you have if you have no meaning internally, all that, um, my journey really like probably the most significant part of my journey was in, uh, 
when I was 13 years old and I just accidentally started lucid dreaming and that completely changed the uh, course of my life from that point forward. It was mm. really just the inability to have nightmares at that point. I was getting chased by a monster and I like fell into quicksand and I was just like, this is stupid. This, like, really? I'm getting chased by a monster and I'm in quicksand? I was like, what, what, what is this, a cartoon? I looked yeah. at the monster. I was like, this is stupid. I'm dying now. So I was just like, ah, I'm going under the quicksand. I, I just like sunk under the quicksand like this at the monster. <laughs> I woke up and I was like, I was like, really? Really? Okay, this is stupid. I get this now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> have you, have you experienced with lucid dreaming? Do you, have, do you, have you dived into that? Yeah, yeah. Bro, the last lucid dreaming, it was so fucked up. I'm on, I was running away from a lion. Then there mm. came elephants. And at the end, I was on the balcony and a gorilla came. And at that point, I was like, no, that can't be. <laughs> yeah, and it's just like trigger, boom. <laughs> like, oh, I'm, I'm in a dream. Okay. Yeah, I'm in a dream. Fuck this, yeah. Oh, my God. For me, the reason why I love the lucid dreaming so much is as it got stronger and stronger. So it's been like, it's been a really long time now. I'm 30, I'm 39. I'll be 40 in March. So it's been a long time that I've been messing with these. And I realized as I got stronger and stronger and stronger with it and able to create more and more and more, I, I realized that it just started feeling more real than being like awake. And also knowing that I'm asleep and saying, well, why is this more real than I'm, when I'm awake? And then it just started making me realize just how much we're actually creating when we're awake. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know, I don't want to get like too insane with it, but I'm fully convinced that I have no control over my reality, that I'm creating it. But the only way that I can truly create it effectively is if I give up full control. I have no ego. I have no mind. I'm not using my mind in the creation. I'm, I'm using the voice that speaks within me. And I listen to I'm it with that i wrote a quote yes on, the moment you start planning you are bound to be disappointed yes. because you have no choice yes it is choiceless awareness which fulfills me now for three four years choiceless yes. awareness not having a choice we in sri lanka we say to that neti neti which means whether this nor that we yes. remain this aware and that's the that's the thing once you are choiceless aware the universe will throw everything to you everything everything Every that's so crazy man i i catch myself often even now getting back into the into the choice right mm -hmm. and i get disappointed so i'm tr i'm working on that still like to to step back and just let it happen let it flow right Yes. Yes. That's the only way to get lost in the flow of life and let it drift you to the destination that you've been to because you've been born for. Because like for me, I realized I can't, I can't get outside of time. Like my soul might be timeless, but my mind is completely trapped in the fourth dimension. I can't see outside. My choices can't be made outside of time. The only way that I can choose anything in my life is by following whatever takes time away because time is always going to be the gatekeeper. It's always going to be what just fucks up everything, it, you know, and my choices and that. And I realized because I have no real control over my choices, who my parents were like endless, in, an infinite number of like things have come together like this to 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 create me in a way that I have really no control over what makes time go away for me. I can't control what I love. I can't control who I love. I can't control any of these things. So I really just realized if I'm doing anything other than following what makes time go away for me, then I'm completely, I'm in my mind and I'm trying to make choices. Because if I'm making my own choices, I'm always going to end up watching the clock. I'm always going to be in a place of ego. I'm always going to be in a place of like, what can I do? I'm going to be thinking about myself. I'm going to be like, I want to do something else. It's me, 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 me. If I listen to what makes time, makes me timeless, it's like, I'll just go back to calisthenics. If I'm on the rings and I'm working on a flow and what, you know, like studying movement patterns and trying to expand my mind, feel different parts of my body, like calm myself, to just make time go away and, and be in the moment, be, be completely. It's perfect. I, I, I'm, there's no me. I don't give a sh I don't care if I fall. I don't care if I hurt my, I don't care about anything. I'm just there for the art. And then the second I control, it's just, I got time. I got to be somewhere. I got to Time, yeah. time is, for me, it's time. Time is 100% the, the destroyer of everything good. Bro, that's so, so dope to hear that from you, man. That, that's actually the master key. That's the master time. key. 
Yeah. God, it's it's crazy. Like, and just I I don't know. Just neurochemically, if we're watching the clock, it's doing bad. It's cortisol at the very limit. You know, you know, we're having so much coming out of us. Cool. Like it, it we're yeah. drugging ourselves. What we focus on drugs us. Like I I just wish people could could uh, really accept that our actions are chemical factories. Like every everything we do, and when especially when our mind is present and we're following the path of our mind in in our actions the computer lines up with the vehicle and the soul drives the car when, when it's all in harmony and you're doing all that it's releasing the proper the proper chemistry the, the proper hormones in your body it's going to change you and you're going to feel the change what we eat the building blocks it's going to change you everything is going to change us and uh what do you what do you eat like by the way i'd, I'd love to i'd love to know more about that let's, let's talk about food um and consciousness because those go hand in hand it's what we're made of yeah yeah um i do fasting a lot a lot of same every um, day because the, the moment i eat twice or three times a day i get very slow i get very unnatural yes and we remain natural right to me unnatural is to eat three times a day and to be in the mind natural mm -hmm. is to be out of the mind being aware of oneself and being choiceless yes letting time decide because you so of course of course you eat one meal a day also one meal a day for years for years yeah. for years too for years for years yeah i can't and then people are always like how do you have so much energy it's like food does not give you energy food is not fuel food is building blocks like stop thinking of it as fuel your body has all the fuel it needs just mm. as long as the, as long as the machine is built you're good just just how you know like you will go like it's how long did it take you when you started fasting for the uh the energy like the brain fog to go away because i was fully convinced i'm kill you know when i stopped eating i'm not i'm not giving all the food that 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 my microbiome that the trillions and trillions the entire universe that lives inside of me i'm not feeding it the way it wants it's releasing toxins it's getting angry my gut's not producing as much serotonin so of course there's going to be some brain fog but then my body righted itself between like two months to two months i mean not two months two weeks to a month and then there was no more issues with fasting. There was no more, you know, that feeling that everyone thinks they're hungry, which is just stomach clearing that happens like two or three hours oh, after you eat. Likes. Yeah, it's just like, it's nothing. Hunger now is like when I'm like dizzy and I'm, I'm going to fall down. Like that's hunger. Like, you know, like it's not like my stomach rumbled once. That's like hunger. Yeah. Where, yeah. Your, mind, where your brain is like, whoa. <laughs> Yeah, and how beautiful is it to not think about food at all throughout the day? Just be like, I'm here. I'm just doing what I'm here for. I'm doing my purpose. I'm, I'm t making time go away. Screw food. It's never me, 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 me. It's not like you're in the middle of like some some artistic project or something. You're like, I must feed me. I must feed me. My stomach made a rumble. I must do. I must do. I must do. Stomach rumbled. <laughs> it's crazy. It pulls so, us back into, into the faults. Mm -hmm. Big time. Do you, uh, just out of curiosity, you know, like, do, do you eat animals or you uh, no animals? I, I eat animals. Yeah. Okay, yeah. For me, I, I was like, ah, I love animals, so I can't consume them. But, you know, it is what it is. I, I don't I don't judge anything for that. But I did feel a consciousness shift when I, like, stopped consuming anything that had died. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm, right now, I'm seeing a difference when I do a one meal a day and I mm. eat no no meat at all i feel very very light yes and uh, the emotions are are very very constant in a good in a good way i'm, ex I'm yeah. exploring this, right i'm exploring this at this time mm -hmm. and i'm seeing where it's going i'm seeing where where it's going because so many people went from meat to vegan or just plant-based and i'm yeah. making because i always thought like animal based animal based animal based and that belief you know we are what we think right mm -hmm. and i thought in that way i got programmed and i'm seeing it and the good thing is i'm seeing it i'm, yeah. I'm i have a distance from it and i'm on a shift right now where i keep a balance like both mm. I, you know, again, I don't know what's best for health. I think eating some animal products probably would be good, you know, for people like I, I'm coming from at it strictly from like a consciousness and just performing. For me, it was really pow empowering. So it's been like eight years since I completely removed everything. Mm -hmm. And it's like, 
it, it was it was really profound in the beginning when I realized everything that I believed my whole life where I was like, oh, I'll get weak or this. I'm like, I eat like 60 grams of protein a day now, like for years. It's, I've been eating starvation levels. And I just realized my body is capable of so much more than I've been told. And then like that was a huge eye opener and made me question so much more because I was always very science based and very into reading studies and applying studies. And just seeing, like, like over, just continuously proving that, like, I could live differently, but, you know, regardless, you know, finding different, different answers. I, I was a different anecdote than the studies I was reading. I realized none of this matters. You're not in the study. You're not this. You're not that. It's just like it only applies to you if it works for you. This, but I, I just realized you can do anything. I don't need to eat a certain amount of protein per grams of body weight. I don't, I don't need anything. It's just, I don't need food during the day. I don't, I just, I just need to do whatever, whatever my body and mind tells me to do. Yeah, man. Not uh, what I think I need. Yeah. A good tip uh, for me actually is to do the, the opposite upside down. Everything that we have been told, just do the complete opposite. Do the opposite. Yeah. It's out paradoxically somehow. Uh huh. Right. Yeah, the, like the only advice I ever take from the news is like if I see the news on, I'm going to be like, oh, that's right. I should turn you off and click. That's it. <laughs> that, oh, that, that's the advice I take. I'm going to do that. Yeah. 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 Any, any advice that comes from culture, I'm like, I don't want to join your cult. Thank you very much. I'm good. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> yeah. Now I know what to do not. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for telling me what I shouldn't do. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh my God. So you do a lot of meditation. Meditation. Let's yeah. talk about that. So why don't, why don't you tell us like how, how you meditate, share your practice? Because you, I see you do a lot of br breath work and breathing work. Mm -hmm. so. so basically I wake up and the first thing I do is going from a laying position into a seated position with the mm -hmm. wall on my back. That's the first thing I do every day for four years, almost four years, every day. Because a noisy mind, which is uh, the nature of the mind, it's very confused. I mean, uh, the nature of mind is confused. And to have a, a, a confused mind as a master is very dangerous, right? Very And meditation helps you to, 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 to see the nature of your mind because otherwise you won't be able to see it clearly because you, you are in the belief system that you are the mind, right? You have no yeah. distance. So I don't want to be guided by a confused mind because that's it's very dangerous. Very. I, I want to be... Um, um, I want a mind as my tool, as it is, right? It's my tool. Exactly. I want a tool. That's why I'm doing meditation. That's the uh, back to the door story. I opened every door outside of me and they remained empty. Only one door was shining bright, inviting, and that was the door of meditation. Excellent. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Well, how do you, how do you, so yeah, I've been obviously meditating for forever. I do, I do the opposite though, where uh, I try to, uh, I try to like supercharge my brain and just instead of like slowing it down, speed it, but without any control over it, and just like just free associate and just basically try to like overclock it and break it. So yeah. I, I go, I go the the exact opposite route, just just because it's what 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 feels natural to me. I, I just feel like exploring your mind in the way that feels most natural and the way that you're drawn to and that then the way that it will have you do it the most i find it's it's the best because also you know there are times where in the in the uh you know in the refractory period after trying to overcharge and break my brain then it's like it slows down and then i experience that no mind that clearness you know like where it, where it's lack of thought so i find everything plays off i'm always trying to play off the duality trying to uh find middle ground by experimenting both like the outskirts, like the extremities of, of both, both things. And uh, breath work is obviously going to play a huge role in this. And I know you do a lot of specific breath work. I do it a little differently and I'll, I'll talk about mine. Why don't you talk about your breath practice? Um, before, uh, before <laughs> the breath technique, I only did meditation. Then I did meditation and afterwards breath work. Mm -hmm. Now, 
I go from the laying position after I wake up into the seated and I do breath work and medita meditation because it is essentially a meditation, right? Uh -huh. Yes, of course. Meditation because it's always the awareness behind that action you do. So right now I'm doing the breath work and the meditation at the same time so I don't lose that much time. Yeah. So, so that that's actually good because again time like any it's good and I, th I think what you said there is really brilliant is trying to combine as many of these things together and make harmony because like life life is holistic the body is holistic the you know the more that we can integrate things together and weave them together i think the more we get out of it because again if you can take the worry of like i got to do this 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 that's why i love calisthenics flows I don't have to be like, I got I to gotta practice this skill, this skill, this skill, this skill, this skill. I'm just like, I'm going to do a set and put them all, free, uh, put them all together. Do, the, do them all at the same time. Because it takes the time focus out of it. We only have 24 hours in a day. How many, where we're, if we're adequately resting, we really only have 16 hours in a day. And then it's like, with those 16 hours, how are you going to get the most out of it if you're always worried to like, I got to do all these things. If you can put them all together and calm down that worry of time, did even better your brain is more more prime more focused more focused to do what makes time go away because you're not focused about time you're doing the right thing i think that's brilliant how you uh you said you integrate them all together mm -hmm. very very smart sometimes i catch now in greece like i'm doing like i'm, I'm waking up like very uh, uh uh unfamiliar i wake up and i do the breath work and the meditation at the same time because very it smart. all works right I've been too much into the meditation, no mind, no mind. And now I'm mm -hmm. working to get back into calisthenics because I'm finding, as you said, meaning again in those yeah. things. Because it was actually just um, the awareness that I needed back, the consciousness of who I am. And now I'm able to get back, but I didn't do that. I was too much into the spiritual ego, right? Yeah. Where everything... I, I believe you did that same experience, right? Oh, all the time. And all yeah, the all the time. I get too much into the physical. I hurt myself. I get too much into the spiritual. I start falling behind on things. It, it's, it's, to, it's always what happens. You know shit. Like, now I'm going to convince everybody, right? <laughs> yeah, all the time. All the time. Yeah, I'm getting back to normal life with awareness. That's the key. That's the point. Like, doing all those things. Create, create them, combine them together to don't to not lose so much time and get better. Yeah. So true. Now, uh, the way I do my breath work, I'm going to throw this out there. I, I just I found like I wasn't drawn to the, the structured breath work. But what I found worked for me and that I did enjoy doing and would constantly reward me and make me feel better. I do my breath work as singing. So I'll, I'll find like I'll just practice singing and I'll, I'll just like, you know, I'm not, I'm not good, but I'm doing it as breath work. That's, that's, that's all like, you know, strength and lungs, clear it out. I'll just do like, there. And, and I also like the, you know, the tonal and the frequency aspect of it, you know, the vibration aspect of it. So I'm, I'm essentially just exploring tones, exploring my voice, exploring that and doing that as breath work and just, you know, and then I get, I also get the artistic feedback of it and just makes the time go seamlessly and I'll usually do it at night and then kind of like seamlessly transition into like, you know, exploring my mind after I'm done. And I, I just find, again, just, just like, I'm trying to do what you're doing. Just combine as many things together, get the artistic mm -hmm. requirements done, get the breath work requirement done, get my body primed and all that. And then just go right into mind exploration afterwards after I've, you know, been vibrating my throat and like, you know, tr doing this and expanding my mind that way for, you know, anywhere up to two hours. Vibrating the throat very yeah. important once you wake up like after all your meditation breath work some singing yeah some yeah. Um, chant, maybe just explore i also want to talk about like the vibrate how important this is right now what this is allowing us to do people use this to like just you know fight with each other or like say i, I want to order this thing or like that that shirt is what looks good on me like they don't realize you can take this vibration and do what we're doing now. We can have a conversation about something that you can't see, you can't touch, you can't feel it. It's not readily in front of you. We are creating metaphor. In order for anyone to understand this conversation, for both of us to be present, you and I both have to be creating a reality in our mind, sharing it together, then exploring this created reality in between us and anyone else who's listening. It's the same thing. We're all in this reality together, talking to each other and exploring it. 
And that's beautiful. That's why we have these things. These vibrations literally allow us to talk to each other, create reality and explore a super consciousness together because our minds are now linked and we're actually exploring our creation together. It's, it's the most beautiful thing. Like we're not sitting here being like, hey, I like the way that black shirt fits or like, you know, like, oh, I like the tank top. Oh, cool hair. You know, we got similar hair. You know, like we're not talking about things that you could see, touch, feel, think about. We're talking about something that does not exist outside of our minds right now. And every, people are joining in with us. We have literally created a super consciousness simply by using these. Wow. Wonderfully said, brother. It's, it's powerful. To bring that back into the, con into the conscious mind is crazy. Like... We just use these things to like worry and yeah, dumb shit, right? All the things. Yeah. Think of what a sin it is every time you use this powerful gift to take away that mental model. So like imagine if somebody walked by and said, what you're talking about is stupid. You shouldn't talk about it. What are you, what are you guys? You guys sound silly. Think of what you're doing. You're literally trying to crush an entire reality, fold the reality in on itself. That like, what are you doing with that? Like every time you spread fear, every time you're like trying to make someone fearful or, or you're like, uh, I wish we understood the power that we have. Like when you encourage someone like, oh, don't do that. You know, you're just going to fail. Think of the power that like what you're doing. Think of the sin that you're doing. You're literally trying to like rob someone of their destiny, rob someone of their creative, you know, of their consciousness expansion. Like these are incredibly powerful and we take them for granted every single day harm ourselves, harm others, and just rob ourselves of our destiny, just simply using this, because we don't understand the gift that it is. Mm. Wow, yeah. This yeah. is a fresh world. Yeah, and nice. then I, I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna say something crazy, and then our destruction of language. Uh, I, like my favorite anecdote in the, in, in, in the English language to exp explain like visual language, we've been robbed of the meaning of our words, and that makes this so much less powerful. Word etymologies and like the origins of words, like they, it's so, so important to, to like forming visual image in the mind and make, making that metaphor, this, uh, this super consciousness that we're sharing more important and more powerful. So my favorite word in the English language is the word dork. So like if I dork, like, you know, like you call someone a dork, you, you like, you know, the word, it's just like an insult, a silly word. Yeah. Have, have you heard it? No, not yet. Okay, so so for for English speakers, like uh, you know, if if it, in English it would be like you call someone a dork. It basically like people are like, eh, kind of means like a nerd or something. I think it means a nerd, and uh, they they kind of like imagine like maybe like one of the guys from the Big Bang. Sh <laughs> Wendy's yeah. laughing. She knows my anecdote uh, from the Big Bang Theory. Like like some nerdy guy. What a dork actually is. It's it's a it's an antiquated whaling term for a blue whale's penis, which is the largest sex organ on planet Earth. So when you call someone a dork, you're actually calling them a giant pink whale penis. So so in order to see that now now like once that's understood, you can't unsee it. So the 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 vague meaning where if I say a dork to you, you just be like I don't know a nerd, somebody with glasses on or something. No, now what I'm really saying is you're the biggest penis on planet Earth. Like that's what you are. You're a dick. <laughs> like yeah. it, and it's just a funny way to like get people to understand how visual language really can be when the meanings of words aren't stripped from them. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So I'm babbling. I just I'm excited to be talking consciousness with you. So I'm gonna go a little wild. Crazy. Crazy. Wow. Man, man I, I gotta scroll some crazy shit too. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just go with it. Have fun. Okay, let's like just say the craziest shit that pops to mind. Let's go. Let's go full blown hippie. <laughs> <laughs> um. Hmm. Mm -hmm. What was the craziest thing in the spiritual world that happened to me? Oh man. Oh man. Yeah. I, oh yeah, I, I was on that. I was on that uh, ninety day semen retention thing, right? Where okay, you retain your seed to yes, yes. be more creative and be more uh, to have more strength. And on that journey, at the beginning of the on the of the journey, I just wrote down a few things like I want to get this sponsor, like like specific. I want to get this sponsor. I want to get that much money. I want to be there. This that and. Mid it all came true. It all were rea reality, but not like uh, the manifesting that I do now, like like small things, like going 
to another country. It was like really in detail, right? And man, I was just so connected to this uh, pilot on my way to uh, Austria. It, it, was, it was almost like uh, I, I had a mental breakdown afterwards because I couldn't realize that I'm getting 10 grants now for this and that just by imagining. <laughs> Right, it's all it's amazing. Fucking slide now, and I'm super connected with this pilot, and I know everything that happens here. Mm -hmm. so weird, super. It's cool. it's really really interesting how anytime you do some kind of like I, I find like like a retention thing, something where you're just doing it for spiritual growth or you know spiritual purposes, it's crazy the dividends it pays you. Like every time I've ever done something like that, like, like I have a son now because of stuff like that, you know, like I, I like it gives you everything, the manifestation that you get from just, again, I think it comes down to like, like when we do things strictly for the beauty of it and just for like the love of it, the passion of it, I feel like that's what, what always strengthens your power of creation the most. I, th I think that's why artists generally, you know, are so, I mean, obviously they're creative people, but I think they're so much more chemically powerful at creating just because they're always in a state where they're doing things strictly for the art of it, for the love of it, for the passion of it, for no other reason, for the faith in it. And I think that's really, really powerful because again, placebo, you know, psychosomatic, uh, you know, brain manifestation, it's real. It's the, it's the most powerful effect in medicine. Placebo is real. It, like what the brain believes, the body carries out, reality carries out. I, and like when you're doing something like a semen retention thing, I think your powers of creation are just going to be so much more accurate and successful simply because you're always going to be neurochemically dosed at all times and 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 i think we think that it's like oh they make us feel things i, I really think they make us create things and actually change our reality around us because what all we are i mean we're just electrical charge in a vacuum like yeah. i mean you want to be like oh we're having an a scientific conversation okay well let's just go to the base of it we're in a fucking vacuum and we're nothing but electrical charge why the fuck can't we why can't we manifest things it's nothing other than electrical impulse coming in and we're processing it into every everything like none of it exists it's all empty space and electricity that's all it is crazy yeah oh it's you, so fascinating i love that you brought up the retention thing and also i think the other reason why that might be so powerful and i'm gonna i'm just gonna deep dive on that too because a long time ago i was like yo porn all that shit's gotta go that's bad and it's just because it burns out your frontal lobe like the brain damage that like you know like over over sexual gratifying yourself and and just like not to not to mention just the ADHD that like porn creates just in general where you're just like not good enough, not good enough, not good enough, not good enough, not good. It's destroying your mind. It's going to destroy your inter interaction with reality. But really, it's going to burn out your frontal lobe, make you make bad decisions. And if you're in a state of bad decisions, if you're not retaining yourself, I really think there has to be an aspect of sexual purity to strengthen your manifestation simply because you're going to have a form of like bad decision making and ADHD when your when your frontal lobe is burnt out from like over 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 orgasming, over releasing those chemicals mm -hmm. and not the right combination that you would get if you were in like a not you know, there's other ways to fast. You don't only really fast with food, you fast with a lot of different things. Anytime you remove something from your life, you're fasting. And I think that I think that that break that your frontal lobe takes really strengthens your powers of creation. Like extreme extremely strengthens it and mm -hmm. brilliant i'm not surprised that you got every single thing that you wrote down in detail incredible yeah, yeah. man it was it was just uh, unbelievable very untrue very very untrue uh it was like a, a, a ride on a roller coaster that i created yeah yeah that's i mean that's that's beautiful like what, uh, I'm sorry, I got sun in my face. I keep trying to shift around. It is what it is. So, like, what else? Uh, did, did you have any other, like, interesting creation experiences with this? I, I, I'm sure you've had some crazy ones. Yeah, now I'm more controlled into this. Like, I'm, I was in uh, Portugal three weeks ago. Now I'm in Greece because I just, I, I'm a guy that loves sun, right? Yeah, I'm, same. I'm, I'm not going too high with the manifestation because... Uh, when I go too high, the breakdown will be very close, right? The parasite mind will be very close to, uh, at you, right? And I don't want that parasite, which I call mind, um, to uh, to get into me, right? And suck mm -hmm. me. Right? So you're, that's you're, 
You're spot on, by the way. I did that to myself recently, like over over creating, over manifesting, and then having that like that dump period where it, where then it like I got tied into my creations and started focusing on them. And yeah. again, I went back into focus and I didn't realize that I had actually put my ego on external things. So like while my ego, I wasn't feeling it internally, my ego reflected back off uh, uh, back into me off my creations. And I didn't even realize it put it back into me. And I I'm, I'm recently coming through a little bit of a suffer period that I that I got from not realizing what I had done to myself. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that's why I'm always trying to lower my uh, my um, manifestation because I don't want that parasite to get back. Right? Yeah. Because once you are uh, in that uh, in that um, thunderstorm of mind, it is very hard to get back. It's also, really difficult. Very. It takes men. You may be the wisest. You may have thousand hours of meditation done, but once you're in it, you are in it, and it's very hard to get out of it. I don't like that process at all. That's why I keep being. And at the end, what is there to manifest, right? What is there to manifest? I let it. Nothing. Happen. It's all manifested for you. Water is the key. Like let the universe manifest the things itself. Lao Tzu mm -hmm. said that uh, the world. Or better said, nature governs itself. It doesn't need our doing. None. Our, the moment I strive, do, try to manifest too much, I go down the rabbit hole 100%. Yeah. Yeah, because th I, I think that's such a good point. Yeah, you go down the rabbit hole. Like when I manifest too much, I see, I see the manifestation, I see it and I want to explore it and I want to, I want to do it more. And then my conscious mind gets involved in it. And it, mm -hmm. it really is just, I'm, I'm only manifesting by removing the conscious mind. I'm only manifesting by opening those doors, by, by removing the gate of time. That's it. It's just taking the time gate off. I'm only following what makes time go away. And the second I, I do that and I get rewarded and I see the, the manifestations of the creation and following the path, It comes right back into me, and then I get focused on. I, I try to focus my my path in there, and it's like there's so many levels to this. I, it's just it's crazy. Every time I open up a new level, I'm like, damn, I get sabotaged by the level before it. <laughs> yeah, back to the paradox. You stop creating, and universe throws everything to you because you don't care no more. The mm -hmm. moment you, it runs away. Mm-hmm. You know, and creativity. I re oh, what's up, cyborg guys? Uh, John Falcar just joined in. What's up, what's up cyborg? And so, uh, yeah, I think I think the creative aspect too. I think it's so important. And let's talk a little more creativity because might as well. The more things that I got creative with over my life, and the more I gave myself to the creations, gave themselves, got lost. You know, got lost in the creations because it's been a lot of things, not just calisthenics. Calisthenics, like it's, it's been a lot. It, it's been very multidisciplinary, and. Uh, I found that the more I gave myself to these things and as long as they were authentic and things that made time go away, that's, that's really what killed my ego for me. That's what kind of like took, took me away from myself. because I realized the more that I gave these thousands and thousands of hours to, to these practices, like just trying to like be something that I wasn't born as, you know, I spent, you know, like really over, it's just endless amounts of hours to things that I wasn't born being able to do. And like, I wasn't born being a part. It just, took me away like i find that there's um, there's so very so little of me left that like i was born as that i started off as it's there the like it's all it's all uh, every, all the fabric is still there but it's a totally different garment at this point it's it's unrecognizable and um yeah i don't know practices practicing creativity is just like i don't know does it make you like Does it, does it evolve you? Does it change you? Does it make you a superhuman since you can do things that you weren't able to do when you were born as a human? I mean, are we lying to ourselves? Are we saying these things are just workouts? These things are just hobbies? Or are they really just evolving you as a creature, evolving you, making you something different? I don't know. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on that? Like, do, do, like, do these truly, do our practices evolve us? Do they change us? Do they remove who we are and leave something else in, in, behind? Like, I would say those practices bring us closer to our true authentic self. Yeah, that's true. So then when we are born without these practices, who mm -hmm. is that? 
if that's not the authentic us, that if that's like the baseline us that don't, that, and we don't have the authenticity yet, who are those people? Who was I before? Who was I before these practices brought me back to myself? That's the real question that I want to find out. We want to get back there, right? Yeah. We want to go back there when we were child. But with Not all, big. with everything we've acquired as adults, like how interesting would that be? Yeah. To make that the would... Ouroboro, to put the tail back in the snake's mouth and unite infinity. Yeah. 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 Fascinating. What what else have you? What other artistic practices have you uh, gone down? Like, what else? What else have you focused on? Because I could tell that you've definitely been multidisciplinary, especially with like bringing the dance in. I see the artistic vision and everything you do. Like, what else have you done? Um, breastwork, calisthenics, cultural retention, um, creating choreographies through my third eye, like in very detail. Uh, there are much more, but I, I, I don't see them as disciplines. Or, oh, okay, yeah. But um, yeah, the major things are those few uh, things after waking up, right? In the morning. Like for me, the morning is like absolute important. The first hour. Like if, if I remain choiceless aware in the first hour with those practices, Mm -hmm. during the day I will be in that choiceless awareness and I will be happy fulfilled and I will do the things that I'm supposed to do yeah I, I gotta take this from this conversation with us I, I really have to be more uh, practiced in my morning routine like I'm very uh, I don't like waking up so I'm very like quick uh, like I'll, I'll stay in bed till the last second and then rush out the door or like you know check my phone and be like oh shit I'm so behind on so much stuff I gotta, I gotta really catch up and it, 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 it's bad. I got I to take this from our conversation. I really have to change my morning practice. Yeah. Maybe, oh my. yeah. Yeah, it's, it's not good. Not good at all. Um, so what, what are your plans? Uh, Cal I, you want to talk about flystenics? Yeah, flystenics. Talk, talk about creating something. Like, what an awesome uh, thing you're doing there. We're working on the app right now where you can uh, spot calisthenics park in Germany. Um, that's uh, awesome. Yeah, we're trying to spread calisthenics as much as possible since we do that naturally, since we're supposed to do that. Why not spread it like a wildfire? Absolutely. We should do that. And if, 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 you stop, if you stop doing that, then something is wrong. Something mm -hmm. wrong is happening inside you because we should do that. And... Um, I mean, we have all the tools that we need to do. And when you behave like a, a, a blind guy or a guy who, 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 hasn't, uh, who has no legs, right, then something is wrong. Yeah. Right? And you, you, do, you don't deserve that full body, that, that full mechanism, right? So true. It's, it's so true. Yeah. Yeah. We don't deserve everything we're given. We only deserve what what we appreciate and what we make use of. So make, true. Exactly. Yeah. Well, how can people uh, How can people connect with Flystenics? Tell Tell people how to get in touch because it looks like you guys are doing major things in Germany. I, I love what you guys have been doing with that. Uh, we have a YouTube account, Flystenics. Uh, we have an Instagram account, Flystenics, and we have the app. All questions are in those three platforms. Nice, nice, nice. And can people learn from the app as well, or is it mostly... Uh... Yeah, there, there are beginner routines. Uh, freestyle routines will be coming next, but they are already on YouTube and on, on, on the Instagram page. You will see a lot of athletes around the world where we, yeah, we change, uh, we, uh, we discuss about moves. So everything about freestyle calisthenics is in flytenics. That's really cool. That's really cool. So I'm definitely going to recommend. Uh, that's good for me to like recommend to everyone now. Yeah. And the conscious talk will be also in the Flytenics app, like breast work. There will, there nice. will come. Oh, so you're putting that, you're going to put that into the Flystenics app. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. That's really valuable. Nice. Yeah. Oh my God. Respect on that. Now let, let, let's do a little more calisthenics talk since we're talking calisthenics now. Let, let, what, what are, What's your favorite movement? What what really? What's your favorite move? What's your favorite skill? 
obviously 360. 360. Yeah. Let, let's talk about it. Talk. Tell us about the 360. Give us, give us the conscious man's take on the 360. The conscious man's take. Wow. Um, I would say the best, the, the best 360 that you can do is the blind 360, where you are not looking at the bar. You should 100% feel it. Because okay. most athletes are focusing too much on, on the head spin, like to, they, they want to see the bar as, as fast as possible. Um, other are focusing on the hip, uh, on the arms. Am I rotating fast enough? And all those things keep you away from that beautiful skill. That's... I mean, I mean, you need to focus on them at the beginning. You need the discipline to focus on everything. But once achieved, you should stop thinking about all those things that could go wrong. It's like a dry, a bicycling, right? So Being true. A, uh, on a bike. The moment you get it, you stop and you forget all about the um, disciplines and so what to true. look after. And then you become very good, a master. Then you flow. Then the universe takes care. And the universe mm -hmm. takes better care than your few disciplines, right? Oh, my God. Brilliant. Bril uh, just brilliant advice right there. <laughs> yes, if you're looking for the bar, you've unlocked the 360. You're looking. What are you telling yourself? You're telling yourself that you're going to fail. You're only yeah. looking because you think you're going to fail. Absolutely brilliant advice. Yeah, because mind, most people, they want to achieve like the, the skills through the mind. But yeah. you cannot trust the mind because mind is not capable in trust. The heart is. The heart is capable of trusting, of real trust, real love. Mm -hmm. Mind essentially is a adopting machine. Like you yeah. adopt. And people that, that, that love through the mind, it's not possible. Or, they, or, or trust through the mind because it may be trust on the surface, but essentially it's adopt because mind is adopting machine. Yeah, it's so true. So it's just a pattern recognition machine. And it's, yeah. it's what, what pattern are you recognizing? You're going like this. The pattern you've recognized, the strongest pattern is that you're going to fail. That's yeah. brilliant. So brilliant. Cause I always, I always find like whenever I, so I film every single thing that I do in my workout. And then I study my movement just so I can understand. And like I visual, like I try to feel. So when, I, when, I'm, uh, when I'm working out, like when I'm doing my, my routine, I try to see what I'm feeling. And then when I watch it, I try to feel what I'm seeing, create synesthesia and kind of like interlock the two. And I usually look for not, not like where the move went wrong, but where it's just the one, the one body mechanic, the one thing shifted where my brain wasn't completely connected, my brain wasn't present. That's something I, I didn't even think the psychological breakdown. So I'm looking at like mechanical and physiological breakdown of my movement pattern. And that's usually what I'll, t I'll change. But like what you said on the, on the 360 is absolutely brilliant. That's a game changer. I, I'm this, this one's going to stay with me for a while. But if you're no, looking, you're scared. You're going to fail. I love that. You record your trainings like fully. Uh, everything, every set I, I do. I, every single, every set I do, I, I record it. I, I sit down afterwards and I study it try to figure out how to make it better yeah i might i might hit it like perfectly like 10 times and just keep recording it because i want it to look like there's there might be like one thing where my toe wasn't pointed enough and i'll be like uh, not enough and I, i'll go back and redo it mm. and uh just i'm always trying to create synesthesia i'm always trying to when i'm watching i'm trying to feel it so like whatever i'm seeing i want to feel it in my body and when I'm feeling it, I want to see it in my head. So, like for me, that that I, I could put a blindfold on. There's absolutely no difference because I'm anything I do while I'm training, I'm watching it in my mind, like a hundred percent. And when I watch something, I can instantly apply it to my training because if I like when I'm watching you, like when I watched you do that back fledge catch into the front lever and then go from there, I watched you do it. I could feel it. I knew I didn't have the I didn't have the technique or the skill for it at that point, but I could feel it and I knew what I had to get to to get there. So when I finally the feeling matched the image that the, the, the image had already told me how it felt. I did it, you know, on first try because I knew at that point I was ready for it because I'd seen you do it. So I was able to feel what you did. Just I knew I couldn't reproduce the feeling physically yet. Yeah. So if that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense, man. I, I get the emotions too when I see a skill. I get the emotion immediately. And I yeah. know what 
what is coming, what is coming. I don't know the technique yet, but I can feel it. Yeah, and I think I think that's mimicry. I found that uh, power, like the ability to mimic, is it's really it's it's I don't know, it's powerful. I I think like one of the the if people could like spend less time trying to like do different sports, different skills, all that, and just learn how to effectively mimic movement patterns. I, I just feel like the whole world would be their oyster. Like everything would open up to them. Like I found that in grappling too, like, cause you know, I coached a lot, a lot, a lot of people uh, in grappling over the course of the years. And like, I always found that like so few, like maybe like a fraction of a percent could actually effectively mimic instantly. And it, it's, a, it's an acquired skill. Like I couldn't do it my whole life. It's something I had to acquire. And like, if we spent our time developing mimicry, Like, oh my God, like that's what, I mean, we're all mimics naturally as children and then mm -hmm. we're put into our mind and we're forced <laughs> to unlearn the mimicry and instead yep. learn by like routine, learn by this. It's like, no, yep. we should just be mimicking. We like, there should be no routine. There should be no set structure to nothing. You should go timeless and mimic. Timelessness, mimic, acquire. Well, it, yeah. Yeah, mimicry. Well, so I'll that makes sense. Uh, mimicked from the Jabberwookies or the Les Twins. Like, mm -hmm. I never danced, right? Mm -hmm. I just had the confidence to do it on the bar. And all the moves you see are mimicked. Almost e everything. I everything I've ever done. Same thing. Everything I've ever done. Any sport, any practice, any art form, anything. It's always mimicked. I've never had a teacher or a coach. It's just mimicry. It's utilizing the internet or the world around me to learn how to mimic. That's yeah. it. Like, never, no, no classes, no coach, no nothing, ever. Because yeah. the whole world is your coach. The whole world is your, is your class. I, I decide which class to go on by what I'm led to because I think it's, it's fucking cool and I just it makes time go away and it's all I want to do. So I go there and I learn how to mimic and that's it. Keep it moving. Mimic the next thing. Mimic the next thing. Mimicry. Like my son, my son's four months old. I just, if I'm going to give him anything, it's how important mimicry is. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So... I don't know. Wow. What, what else? Uh, so, so what, what else is like a skill that you love? What's the skill that like took you forever to unlock? What, what skill really had to be earned? Oh, wow. Um, a skill, it, it has to be a static hold because uh, the freestyle things are quite easy to get. Like even the hard ones, like the 720s, mm -hmm. so giant 540s. But I would say the front lever pull up Oof. is one work on yeah it was yeah. hard to you you need to deserve it yeah yeah i, I can't do it I, i i cannot do a perfect like hold and a front lever at all i'm like I only straddles for this guy i i can't even i'm like <laughs> bar barely bending my elbows in a front lever <laughs> it's, it's pathetic i can't even come close yeah, I, yeah. I, i gotta i gotta work on that one a hell of a lot more Th that's the downside for always doing flows is sometimes i'm like eh, i'll fall behind on certain things because i'm i'm so focused on the transition but Yeah, it's funny you bring that one up. Yeah, that one's a killer. That one's going to take me a long time. Yeah, I'm, I'm also more attracted on the flow things because net, the universe flows. Yeah. Nothing stagnant, you know? Like a plant and a front lever, those things are very um, unnatural, right? Mm -hmm. and I'm not, I'm not um, so much pulled into those isometric holes. I mean, I Same. like them. But I like to flow even more. Yeah, I, I like to hit them for like a three count at most. Like I'll hit it, pause for like one, two, three, and then keep it moving. I like it as like a like a still frame in a video. Like you know, like the video's running, take a quick still frame, keep yeah. it running, yeah, and yeah. That, that's all I do. So like, yeah, my isometric holds are just they're dog shit. They fall behind because I'm just like I just want to move it, hit it, move it, hit it, move it, hit it. Yeah, yeah, the, the flow, universe flows. That's that's exactly it. And just, I don't know, the mind, uh, your training, do you structure it reps and sets? Do you mostly go flow based? Like, how, how do you do? I, I do a few reps, but on the legs, to be honest, because yeah, same. I was just training upper body for years and years, having fun. And now I'm trying to correct that imbalance, right? Same. Uh, morning, I had a leg routine, but besides that, not really, because All routine, flow, right? Out of the mind, right? Mm -hmm. Root structures, patterns, and I'm I want to get rid of all of that. The, how I feel in the moment, yes. Out of the moment should come 
the exercise. Exactly. That's what that's what I do. I'm like driving up to where. So like, I don't know where I'm going to train, just whatever the <laughs> weather is. And I'm like, whatever time of day it is, what will look most beautiful on camera and what ha will have the fewest people there to annoy me? You know, like, yeah. especially if I'm outdoors or anything, I, don't, I, I just want to be like focused on it. And then like, I'll also be like, when I pull up, I'll just be like, well, what am I feeling? Am I grabbing parallettes? Am I grabbing dip bars? Am I hanging rings? Like, what am I doing here today? And then what, yeah. then they're like, the skill will be like, I'll do like a quick warm up set. I'll see how I feel. And then I'll just be like, what's the best looking thing? I So my only rule is every single time I train, every single time I have to do something, whether, no matter how small it is, I have to do something I've never done before. So like, Yesterday, my only goal was I wanted to hit a, a full straight body back fled. So like no bend whatsoever, swing through, skin the cat, and then just go through a, uh, you know, wrap the rings and do a round the world walk. I, it's a combo I'd never done before. That was my goal. Hit it. Done. And then, you know, that's it. That, so it's always, no matter what I do, I have to do something I've never done before every single day of my life. Yeah, no matter yeah. what, if I'm weak that day, I'm just going to point my, I'll, I'll point my ankles differently. I'll do a slightly different shape change just something to have never done it before and just wow. keep moving forward at all times M mic micro actually, goals actually you can do something that you have done before because uh nothing ever happens true. again right true true different time different place different mindset different there's always a different set of and then it's just then uh, what i want to do is just always add in one thing that i didn't know how it felt that's a good way i didn't i didn't un know the feeling until i had achieved it Yeah, yeah, I do those things sometimes too. Like on the way to the park, I imagine a combination that I never mm -hmm. did. Yeah. The best feeling, I don't know if you know it, but you, 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 you know it, uh, is when you like perfectly uh, hit that combo, like the one hit wonder. Like you, you take only one hit, you got the recordings, I'm good for the day, the rest yes. is basic, basic things and upload that shit like yeah. oh a hundred yeah like I'll, i'll hit it I'll, like you know I'll, maybe i'll fall a few times i'll fail maybe i'll rip a little then i'll finally hit it i'll be like yes you know i'll punch my chest throw my phone in my bag take the rings down and just go go do something else like yeah. I, i love that feeling it's just like came conquered and fast like oh my favorite is when i hit it like first or second try and i'm like boom short one today i earned it yeah 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 effortless uh, action Always create this like, action. Like on the way, I created it, I done it, I'm good to go. Oh my God. How it really is the best feeling in the world when you have like this complex thing in your mind. Like it's never existed in the out, outside of your head. You're just watching it, watching it, watching it, being like, I could do it. I could do it. And then you just achieve it and you create it like first or second try. Best feeling in the world by far. Yeah, yeah. Um, Instant step, creation. Step higher than that is if you do a dancing choreography under the bar, which is more complex. That's the one hit wonder. I didn't have that much one hit wonders on, on that crazy bar flows of freestyle dancing. But when I do, woo, I throw the mask. I'm like, I'm good. Mm -hmm. even, if fail, even if it's only fails from now on, I'm good. I did a one hit wonder on a, on a flying Wookiee. Oh my God, that's incredible. Yeah, the more complex it is, the more satisfying it is. So uh, two days ago, because I, you know, I was getting ready to talk to you. So I was like, I, I got I to film something inspired by my brother. So I did, a, I did a marathon walk. I took out the dip bars and I was like, let me see how far and how long I can walk on and in how many different positions without repeating anything. I ended up, I, I walked for a little over a minute, you know, handstands, uh, you know, planche work, the 90 degrees back into like Victorian walk up. It, it's just like mind blowing. It took me so many tries. The second I finally hit it, threw the camera down, changed everything and just had fun the rest of the time falling yeah. off the dip bars and stuff, <laughs> being silly. It's just the best feeling, the, co the complexity of it. I just was like, I have to hit this. I'm going to keep trying until I hit it. Took me about 10 tries, hit it. It was just absolute celebration because it was just, it was so complicated. Yeah. Best feeling. Thank you for that, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> oh. No problem. Yeah. Oh, shit. Are we, are we running out of time? Okay. We, we, we got a few minutes left before IG kicks us off. I, I love this conversation. This, this was amazing. Thank you. <laughs> Seriously. Thank you, Seriously. too. Yeah. It's we very... we, we got to do this again. Every... 
like the mimicking, awareness, training, a few tips, eating. Man, we just updated ourselves through, the, through that self-manifested super consciousness right here. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it, it's true. And, you know, with the amount of things we covered, I think, I think a pretty good thing to, uh, to say to people and to add on is, like, make your life your own, you know? Like, make your life your own and not in your conscious planning. Make your life your own in what draws you to things that you, that you love, that you, you know, live in love, live in timeless love. Like, wear what you want to wear. Look how you want to look. Do what you want to do. Just make, don't take anything just because you think, don't eat the way you think you're supposed to eat. Don't look how, you know, just be yourself. Don't, as long as you're not hurting anyone, as long as you're not harming anyone, just be yourself. Make your life 100% authentically your own and then we can have awesome conversations where every single thing we talk about we can talk about our application to it because it's been made our own it's we're never going to just spit back things that we've heard be like hey let's talk about diet well i've heard you should eat this no no none of this you know like how do you work out well i'm living in flow and doing that well no you should actually do a program of exactly this that every single person should do because we're all the same person we should all do the same workout it just it's so much better make your life authentically yours we are human beings. Persons are many. And many means mind. Both yes. and mind is many. You can't be many. That which is many is the wrong. It's the ego. Only the mm -hmm. ego is capable of changing and transforming faces, perso personas, right? I'm, I'm a human being and I'm capable of attracting everything I really desire and I really want. Yes. Yes. And right here is the most complicated, advanced quantum supercomputer in the known universe. Do not use it for accepted programming. Program your own quantum super transdimensional gateway computer. Do not accept other programming. Do not accept outside source. Inspire. Only, only get programmed by conscious models that you can join into. Do not join into exclusive consciousness models. That, that, yeah. that's, that, that's my take on that. Be careful what you program your mind with. Absolutely, because you are absolutely unique and there aren't two snow flowers identical. In the entire time, in the entire time, all the snow flowers, imagine how many yeah. billions, billions of them, there are no two identical snow flowers. So how can you accept a program and that's Man. just a flower. How, like, we're so complex. Like, you can. Yes. You, you can. Oh, you can, actually, but the natural consequence will be unfulfillment, sadness, depression. And I don't Lack think you want... Lack of consciousness and nothing but mind at all times. Just exactly. always in mind, always trapped in time, having no control. Like, it's just... Etern it, you're basically just, like, trapping yourself in diapers forever. No autonomy. Yeah. You eat when you're told you're supposed to eat. You wear what you're told you're supposed to wear. You have a uniform for everything, a uniform mind, uniform eating structure, uniform everything. It's, you have no choice whatsoever. It's not your life. It's, it's, like, no. it, it's like, I mean, at the end of the day, if we're novelty generators, if, our, if, if we're just supposed to be intricate, like infinitely complex, what are you doing? You're like, what, what kind of a sin is it to live someone else's life just because you're afraid that they, they will tell you you're doing wrong? It's, it's insane. The ultimate sin is... Is yeah. to live someone else's life. It's so true. Yeah. Live your own life. It, I don't know. Be free. Beautiful. Be free. Yeah, freedom. Freedom, freedom, free. freedom. Free mind, free body. Free, just don't hurt anyone. That's it. Like, yeah. one rule. Harm no one, harm nothing. Be free. Be yourself. Don't don't care about anything else as long as you're harming anyone. I mean, yes. you're not harming anyone. Yeah. Oh my God, Kors, I loved love talking to you. Let's let's do this again, brother. We're gonna get yeah. booted off IG. Next time, I'm gonna invite you on my live. Stream. Love that. And um, we keep it running as this one. Absolutely, brother. Anytime I'm, I'm there. This, this is a beautiful conversation. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's just keep going back and forth. Let's talk consciousness. Endless. Like this, this was so much fun for me to really, like, really deep dive into the mind. I'm like, there's so much more we can say about this. Yeah, so much more. Yeah, brother. I love you. Thank you so much for this. I, I really I can't tell you how much I appreciate this conversation. Bottom of my heart, Korsh. I, I, so much, dude. Thank you.
Thank you too so much. Wow, it was yeah. amazing. Amazing. Enjoy Greece, my man. If you want to say goodbye to everyone again, check out Fly Senex. Absolutely, if for any reason you're not following this man right here, follow him immediately. Watch those Jabberwocky videos. Just follow what he's doing. He's doing beautiful things for the art, beautiful things for the sport. Just say goodbye, of course. Do tell these people everything I, they need to know. Love you. And have an awesome day, Raymond. Yes, you too, brother. And guys, thank you so much for the support. Love you all. Thank you. So Later, guys. Bye.